Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 14 this morning. Mark chapter 14. We continue in our series through the Gospel of Mark. Our young people can be dismissed at this time. We're going to be picking up in verse 10. Picking up in verse 10. Mark 14, verses 10 through 21. Scripture says, And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. And the first day of unleavened bread, when, when they killed the Passover, his, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet a young man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, The master saith, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came unto the city, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily, I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him, One by one, is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, it is the one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him, but the Son of Man is betrayed. Excuse me, but by whom the Son of Man is betrayed? Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Ask him to bless his word. Father, we're thankful, Lord, that all scripture... It's given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And Lord, even in this account, this sad situation, Lord, there is profit for us this morning. Lord, your word is written for our benefit. And so I pray, Lord, as we think of this passage, as we think of what happened here, that we would identify and understand and apply important truths for our own lives. Father, ultimately this morning, I need you to work because I am just a vessel. I need you to work in my heart. I need you to work in the hearts of people in this room. Lord, please do away with distractions. Help me to preach plainly and clearly for your glory and for your honor. I pray all these things in faith and I pray them, asking them in your son Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been following along in this study, we are getting closer and closer to Jesus' crucifixion. And of course, the crucifixion of Christ, as we're going to think about tonight, when we look at the Lord's Supper, is a very bittersweet thing, isn't it? It's terrible. It's a horrible thing in that Christ suffered immensely. And yet it also brings us great joy because it is the source of our forgiveness and salvation. And yet, as we read up to the, through this gospel, up to the story of the crucifixion, there's, there's an interesting and, and sad reality here that Jesus is betrayed by one of his own 12 closest disciples, Judas Iscariot. I don't know if, you, if you've grown up in church with me, you've probably had this thought, how could a man who followed Jesus who saw the miracles, who witnessed Jesus walking on water, witnessed Jesus healing the blind, witnessed Jesus casting out demons. How could a man witness all of that, serve alongside Jesus Christ, and yet turn against him and betray him for, so that he could be arrested by the Jews? What a sad story. Of course, we know that God allowed this as part of his sovereign plan of salvation. Jesus was not forced to die. He offered himself up willingly for our salvation. And yet in this story that, that we read here, and we're getting the beginning of it in what we read this morning, 
we get a glimpse into some very important warnings for us. I think we also get a glimpse into Judas's spiritual condition. And I, w- I would exhort you this morning that Judas's spiritual condition serves as a great warning for us here in 2024 as a warning for the local New Testament church. And, and though Jesus is not here physically, we, we cannot betray Christ in the same way that Judas betrayed Christ physically in his presence. Still, there is a reality that there are people who claim to follow Jesus Christ, who claim to be a Christian, some who are faithfully a part of a local church, and yet, like Judas, they do not actually belong to Christ. So this morning, if you're taking notes, let's look at three warnings from Judas's betrayal. Three warnings from Judas's betrayal. I want us to see number one this morning. Number one, some who follow Christ do not know him. Some who follow Jesus Christ do not know him. Now, when I use the word follow there, I'm using that loosely as people who claim to know Christ or who attend a church or were asked, say, I am a Christian. They would say, I'm a follower of Christ. And yet, sadly, there are people who claim to know Christ and yet do not know him. What we see here in the context of this passage, and some of you weren't here last week, and I promise I won't re-preach my passage from last week, but if you remember, this woman comes in and does this great act of worship. She breaks an ointment that was worth a year's salary. That'd be the equivalent of someone coming in and taking a perfume worth, say, sixty, seventy thousand dollars and breaking it, and she poured it on Jesus and anointed him. It was a beautiful act of worship. And the scripture tells us in multiple places that Judas was infuriated by this. He says, this should have been sold and given to the poor. I want us to think about that, because really, that is the straw that broke the camel's back, in that right after that incident, Judas goes out and betrays Jesus. That fills us in on his spiritual condition. Because here he is, in someone that does a beautiful act of worship, and that angered him. Do you know what that tells me about Judas? He did not know Jesus Christ by faith. Because Jesus Christ is worthy of all worship. Judas was not following Jesus Christ for Jesus Christ. He had other things in mind. Let me just warn you this morning. There's a huge danger in the local church, of people who join a church or come to a church for the benefits, but they never come to know Jesus Christ by faith. They may like the fellowship. They may like the community. They like the potlucks. They might even like the preaching. They like the good feeling they get when they come home from church. They like how the truths they're hearing has helped some of their problems in their life. There are people who come for all the side benefits of what the church can offer, and yet they do not know Jesus Christ by faith. I want to read you one of the saddest scriptures in all of the Bible. It comes from Matthew 7, verses 22 through 24. It says this. This is Jesus speaking. He says, many will say to me in that day, talking about the day of judgment, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know what that verse means? There's going to be a lot of religious people that stand before Christ and say, God, we served you. And what does Jesus say? He doesn't say you didn't serve me enough. He doesn't say you didn't serve me the right way. He doesn't say you didn't serve me in the right church. He says, depart from me. Why? I never knew you. There are people who claim to know Christ, but will spend an eternity in hell because they do not know Christ by faith. Church, take heed this morning. 
Lest there be someone in our, even in our close-knit church family that we have here, somebody who thinks because of their association with the local church that they will be accepted of God, it does not work that way. Now let me just say, the blessings of the church, the blessings that God gives are wonderful to be enjoyed. But I ask you this question this morning. Are you seeking what God can give you? Or are you seeking the person of Jesus Christ? Let me, make sh- let me encourage you this morning to make sure that your faith, if you have faith, I hope you do, that your faith is in Jesus and you're not just using him to improve your life. Let's look at the second warning, number two. Number two, some who follow Christ have material priorities. Some who follow Christ have material priorities. We we see multiple clues in Scripture, not only about Judas' spiritual condition, that he did not have a saving relationship with Jesus, but we also see where his focus was. We see it in this passage. Of course, he's infuriated because of this act of worship was a waste in his mind. We also see here in this passage that when he, when he betrayed Jesus, that the, the Jews offered to give him money there. And, of course, we don't know how that conversation went. But the Jews perceived that he wanted something in return, that he had a heart, that he was focused on that. And, and I think they sensed that correctly. And we won't turn to it this morning, but John chapter 12, verse 6 uh, you can go there after church, check it out. It says that Jesus, or excuse me, Judas was the treasurer of the disciples, meaning it says he carried the bag, meaning he carried, it was not a man purse, but uh, he carried the money back then, okay? Judas carried the money for the disciples, and it says in that verse that he was a thief. Can you imagine walking around with Jesus and stealing the money that he has? That gives us some insight into where Judas's heart was. It gives us some insight into where Judas's thought process was. He was seeking material priorities, material possessions. It's unfortunate that there are churches, church members, pastors, who are focused on material things rather than spiritual things. Christian, greed is one thing that will destroy a person. Now, let me be clear. Not every person who struggles with materialism is lost. Let me be clear. Even as Christians, we struggle with it, don't we? We live in a world where we're surrounded by earth and material things. And and so we struggle not to worship, not to prioritize earthly things higher than they ought to be prioritized. But let me warn you this morning, when somebody is acting spiritual and yet they are pursuing and focusing on earthly and material things, that is a great warning for us. Scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. We must be wary as believers. We must be wary of materialism. We must be wary of teachers, preachers, or anyone who is is focused on chasing the almighty dollar. That's what Judas was. He had a material focus. He may have been following Christ as a disciple, but his focus was on earthly things. I remember when I was in high school, there was a man. Some of you might have heard him. How many of you have heard of Rob Bell? Anybody? Handful. I went to school in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a a large Christian school. And during that time, there was a big church, the fastest growing church in the history of the United States called Mars Hill. And Mars Hill went from zero to like 10,000 members in in months. And the pastor of that church name was Rob Bell. And he was very popular and and very well liked. And I remember in the the school I was in, they were kind of uh, um, starting to you know, kind of endorse him. Of course, this wasn't a very good, good school I was at, but they were starting to endorse him and sort of even play his videos in our chapel. And I was only like 17, but I had enough spiritual discernment that I remember in Bible class raising my hand and saying, that wasn't biblical, what we just watched in chapel. And, you know, they just kind of hushed me down. And I started warning people that I knew. I said, listen, this guy is not, not right. He's not biblical. And, 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 He wrote a book called Love Wins, and he pretty much argues in that book that everyone is going to end up in heaven eventually because God is love. Which, folks, that's not what the Bible teaches at all. 
But it was interesting how with this popularity he got, being the pastor of the, this mega church, it wasn't long. A few years later, I thought, I wonder what Rob Bell is up to. So I just went online about six, seven years later. I Googled him, and guess what? He's living in Hollywood pursuing a career in show business in, in California. He's pretty much, de he's denounced scripture, denounced his faith. He's left the ministry, and he's gotten sucked in to what I would say is apostate condition. It's a very sad, sad situation. But that's an example of somebody who looked spiritual, who everybody thought was great. Even, I'm sure Judas, I'm sure people thought, oh, look at Judas. Oh, isn't that great? He's the treasure. Look, think of all the great work he does for the disciples. And yet, not only was he not saved, but his focus was on material things. Christian, let me warn you this morning. We have to guard against this. We have to guard against getting our focus on things that are earthly. We must stay focused on Christ and eternal things. Let's look at the third lesson, number three, this third warning for us this morning. Number three, some who follow Christ will have eternal regrets. Some who follow Christ will have eternal regrets. Look at verse 20 with me. Jesus here is getting to the Passover meal, and it's interesting. He says, one of the twelve that dip, he says, one of you is going to betray me, and they start saying, who is it? And Jesus apparently is dipping in a bowl with Judas at that very moment, and he says, it's the, he says in verse 20, he answered and said to them, it is the one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. Verse 21, the Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. Jesus is saying, I'm, gonna, I'm going to offer myself as a sacrifice. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Jesus says here, it would have been better for Judas to have never been born. What a sad statement. What a sad thing. Of course, we just looked at Matthew 7 there, and Jesus says to the ones who think they know Christ, but they don't, he says, depart from me, I never knew you. He's talking about people that will be sent to hell because they did not know Christ. What a travesty. What a shame for people who were associated with the Savior, for Judas who, who walked with Christ, who ministered with Christ, and yet they never received his free gift of salvation. What a shame to have the blessing so close. The blessing of being so close to the Savior and yet being lost. Church, I never, ever, ever want to give you a false gospel impression. Listen, around here we emphasize a lot of spiritual things. This year, we're emphasizing Bible reading. It's been great. And Bible reading is important. And we emphasize prayer a lot. We have prayer meeting on Wednesdays. And prayer is so important. I emphasize being faithful to church. Being faithful to church is so important for you, for our church, for Christ. We're having a baptism today. I encourage people that are saved to get baptized. That's so important. I encourage you to tithe and give to the Lord. Scripture talks about that. It's so important. I encourage you to witness to lost people, to share the gospel. I encourage you to fellowship and love the people around you. There are so many important things that we encourage, that we emphasize around here. But do not get this twisted. None of those things are going to make you right with God. None of them. Listen to me. You can pray every day, read through your whole Bible. You can be a member in church and wake up and be in hell. And I don't want to be responsible for giving you a false hope that because you're part of Calvary Baptist Church, that you are on your way to heaven, that you're right with God. There is only one way. Scripture is a very narrow road. It says there's one way you can be accepted by God. You have to repent of your sins. You've got to say, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. And then you have to place your faith completely and only in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. 
And I never, ever, and and I'm going to emphasize Christian growth. I'm going to emphasize service. I'm going to emphasize living for the Lord. Those are good things. But don't ever get it wrong that those things can get you to heaven because they can not. You must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You must believe that he died on the cross and rose again the third day. And you must be trusting in what he did for your salvation. And the sad reality is, on the authority of Scripture, is that there will be people who claim to be a follower of Christ, claim to be a Christian, and when they stand before God, they're going to hear these words, Depart from me, I never knew you. That was Judas. As we close this morning, I want to ask you this question. How, I asked this question in the beginning, how could Judas be a follower of Christ and end up in hell? Because he never knew the Lord. He never knew the Lord. And he was focused on earthly priorities. So let me encourage you today, if you're hearing my voice, God brought you here for a reason. Let me encourage you, make sure you are saved. Make sure your sins are forgiven. Make sure that you're seeking Christ and not just his benefits, that you're seeking the person of Jesus Christ. And then if you'll do that, then you can say confidently, I know that I'm God's child. I know that I've been forgiven of my sins. I know I've been reconciled because my faith is in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, It's a somber thought that people could be ministering for Christ and not know Christ. Lord, it's a somber warning that people could claim the name of Christ and yet belong as a child of Satan. Lord, I'm burdened for every soul in this room this morning. Lord, whether they attend church regularly or not, I'm burdened about their soul. Lord, your word is really clear. That you have offered the gift of salvation to us. But that we can be forgiven of our sins, but we have to come in repentance and faith. Lord, I pray if there's any person here today who is like Judas in that They look like a good person. They look like a moral person. They look like a Christian, but they don't know you. Lord, I pray you would draw them right now. Lord, I pray you would soften their hearts, show them their need for salvation, help them to come in faith. Lord, help us as a church not to take these things for granted. Lord, I pray that every member, every person that attends Calvary Baptist Church would have confidence that they're saved by faith. Work in hearts right now, Lord. I ask this in your son's holy name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to, Sue's going to play the piano for a moment. Let me just encourage you this morning. If you don't know Christ as your savior, don't leave today without knowing that for sure. Come talk to me. I would love to show you from the Bible how you can know for sure you're saved. Talk to the Lord about that right now. Amen.